This video is me trying to repair a mini disc MZN510 that I got off of eBay for approximately $35 US. And the problem with this device is that it wouldn't play when you were pressing any of the buttons. So, uh, and also quite dirty on the outside, as you can tell here. So, what happened here is uh, this battery is brand new and no matter how much you actually press the play button or any of the other buttons it wouldn't start the disc at all. If you look at the terminal here you can obviously tell that there's corrosion. The battery that was here previously uh, corroded the terminals causing it to no longer play. So here I'm at the mini disc wiki trying to look up information about the way to service a device and where to actually unscrew the screws in order to be able to open this mini disc player properly without damaging it. Here I'm trying to open the mini disc carefully because it's an old player, it's roughly 20 years old or so, and I just want to make sure that I don't crack the plastic or do anything permanent. On further inspection you can tell that it's just little bits of grime here, some parts of sand of some sort or dirt. Yeah, I, I have no idea what that is, but and here's the extent of the corrosion problem. It kind of starts extending into the board itself a little bit, so that'll need to be dealt with. It's at this point I'm going to try and test the terminals themselves. So here I'm going to ground. I'm using a probe here to inject voltage, and as you can tell at 1.5 volts that the device actually works when you inject it directly into the terminal itself. It becomes obvious at this point that the whole thing, the whole board needs to come out in order to be able to clean it properly. So I'm going to try and save the terminal itself by disassembling the rest of the board. So I'm looking at the schematics here, noting what I need to remove. So here, this is the LCD um, ribbon that connects to the board to the front panel. And here you can just slide that off and then pull the ribbon cable right off like that. In order to get rid of the front panel, you need to hit the switch which opens up the rest of the mini disc. And I'm going to be trying to unscrew from the front panel the LCD screen to try and get that removed here. And you can tell that there's dried lubrication, some additional sand or debris there that will need to be cleaned off. I'm looking more at the schematics here in order to understand how to remove the main board from the sort of mechanics of actually moving the mini disc header. This part requires obviously some soldering. So here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reheat the solder and to remove this ribbon cable safely. Now you'll see that I'm making several attempts here to try and remove it, but what ends up needing to happen is I need to introduce new solder to make it kind of like fresh in a bit uh, in order to be able to heat those two solder points simultaneously to then remove it. So you'll see I added fresh solder to those two bits and then I'm going to try and heat both of them at the same time and then very gingerly remove the ribbon cable off like that. Here this is another um, ribbon cable that connects the board to the mechanics of the mini disc player and it's just really simple as you need to op pull open that tab and then carefully try and remove this ribbon cable. Now this one is a little bit more stubborn than the other ones I was dealing with but as you can tell with some effort you know careful concentration you can just go ahead and remove that as well. Yeah this one took a bit. In here, I'm removing the screws now in order to try and get the whole board removed from the actual case and the other playhead portion of the mini disc. You know that I'm having a little bit of an issue trying to remove it. Um, you can tell I'm trying to pry it open from the ground terminal here, but it seems to not be able to give. And I noticed that when you go to this terminal that it's really just not moving at all. Like this should actually be able to slot up and it's not doing so. So you can tell I'm using my pliers here trying to move it up and I think that corrosion has gone in causing it to get stuck. And here I'm applying white distilled vinegar in order to try and neutralize this acid here and in the efforts to try and see if this will be enough to get it dislodged from the battery terminal the slot container here. So here I am with a um, cotton swab dipped in distilled white vinegar to try and 
neutralize as much as it can and trying to dip it into that um, section that is holding the terminal in there. So you'll see me trying to blot as much as I can, kind of like inundating it, kind of like pulling it with distilled white vinegar to see if I can get the reaction to seep in far enough so that this whole thing can actually get dislodged. Again, this is the main problem. This corrosion here is what is causing the mini displayer to not work properly, at least one of the main issues. So with a little bit of effort here, uh, you know, trying to like make a little bit of space, force it, so that the distilled white vinegar has a chance to get into those crevices to try and neutralize the battery acid. You see, you can tell here, it's actually neutralizing it rather well and getting it so it comes off as flakes, which is what we want. And then after a few minutes of that, of letting it sit and try and do its whole thing, I am trying to use this um, prying tool to go ahead and trying to pick it up trying to use the the battery slot itself as like kind of a pivot point and as you can tell things are moving now so this is this was really helpful in getting it to move around and then with a little bit of extra effort here it's there you can actually get it off and you can see the flakes of the battery terminal um, of the corrosion for off the battery terminal coming off last bit is this little uh, ribbon cable on the underside of the main board that needs to be carefully removed this one's something that people may overlook because it's on the underside, but it's definitely not something to just yank off. Here we have the cassette uh, screw that moves the playhead back and forth. Um, I can't help but think that this is lubrication that is like decades old and it's become gummy as opposed to a lubricant as you'll be able to see later is what I end up doing. This is the sensor that reads the main disc itself. It has a little bit of flakes in there. You can tell that there's some, you know, gunk on the screw itself. And here's a better view on the other side of the battery terminal, which is like full of this um, corrosion as well. And I'm trying to dab it a little bit with the distilled white vinegar from the cotton swab. You know, I, I'm at it for a few minutes here, trying to get as much off as possible. And you can still tell that in sort of like the edges there, there's still more corrosion that will need to be dealt with uh, in some way. So here I'm using a different cotton swab shape, more of like a, a cone and trying to get at the edges here. At this time, I'm injecting some white distilled vinegar directly using this sort of small syringe, trying to get the reaction to happen there. Eventually I figured out that, you know what, maybe the best attempt here is to just remove this terminal and get it clean that way. I was hesitant to do this before because I didn't know whether I could put the terminal back on at the right height and angle as it's freestanding here. But I decided that it was worth it to try and get it as clean as possible. I just added flux, uh, which is supposed to help with the solder, with the flow of solder, and it's not working at this point. So I went ahead and added some fresh solder, or at least I'm trying to. As you can tell, the soldering iron I'm using isn't holding the solder at all, right? It's balling up like this. And that just means your soldering iron isn't clean. So you see, it ends up as a ball on the board itself that I'll have to then remove. So right after this incident, I went ahead and cleaned off my soldering iron using a tip cleaning solution and then scrubbing it a little bit so that the next time I try and actually add some solder, it actually sticks like there. And then going to go ahead and press against the terminal with the hopes that with the flux and this new solder that it will cause the bat this positive battery terminal to actually come off completely here. There you go. As you can tell, there's there it is uh, on its own. So the plan here is now that the battery terminal is just completely on its own, can I go ahead and just clean it with direct distilled white vinegar and just let the chemistry happen at this point really don't there's no need to scrub it at at this initial stage it's like let the the whole chemical reaction really just occur and letting it happen on its own time don't force it and the, here's some footage of me speeding up this process i thought it was like pretty neat to see that um the the whole like bubbles forming and letting it really clean out on its own without having to do really any effort. And I think this is like the procedure to go with whenever you see a corrosion of any type in any of your electronics is to go ahead and 
use distilled white vinegar, have the, this reaction happen, then clean it off with cotton swabs later. So here I am with a small Dremel tool trying to clean more of the corrosion off just a little bit here. And I'm now testing to make sure that I haven't somehow damaged the metal contacts so that there's connectivity around. Here we are uh, using 95% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean up the flux that I use to try and get the positive battery terminal off. And really at this point, it's the starting of the process of trying to clean the board from start to finish, right? Now that all the parts that I want to disassemble have been disassembled, it's, now it's cleaning time. So it's just rubbing the board off with uh, isopropyl alcohol and using a uh, con swab to do that. Um, and then here we are looking at one of the ports that you would use to have an LCD screen for these mini disc players connected to, and just filled with lint. So I'm using another, uh, the same poking tool that I was using before to get as much detritus out of there. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the cone-shaped cotton swab to go in there as well with a, with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to really get at like the grimy parts and try and get as much of this dirt off. And that looks much better now. Here we are. And I want to make sure the optical drive also has some sort of cleaning procedure done with it. So I did it here as well. And now we're getting to the main board. Now, I don't want to use rubbing alcohol on this portion because um, plastics don't behave the same way as with like PCB and that in the metals themselves. So I'm using just warm water and soap and, you, and being a little bit with uh, elbow grease, rubbing it in to try and get off this um, kind of sandy like, I don't know, detritus. So here I am using the cone cotton swab to really get at these like harder edges and you can see it just takes a little bit of effort and time to just go in and pick up everything here and it, these type of you know cleaning case like cleaning processes just takes time really here I am I, probably over a period of like maybe two sessions just going in using how I don't know how many cotton swabs but just trying to get as much of the edges clean as much of these like little nooks and crannies clean, trying to get all the little debris here right off. And it just takes time. I mean, these electronics have a lot of like little places in which these things can hide. And here, this is the USB cover and even underneath the cover in the case has like this debris in it. And it, there wasn't really a good way to get this gummy plastic cover off, at least not in a way that I saw that would have been successful. So I decided to just leave it in with the idea that I was going to just like clean it in place. So just go ahead and leave it in there. And again, cotton swab, soap and water. The basics work really well. Trying to clean the logo here, making sure that's, you know, as clean as I can get it because I want the outside of the case to also be as clean as the inside of the case because this will be something I'll try and like showcase or be a daily driver for me. Here we are adding silicone grease to the screw that's going to be moving the playhead and then to go ahead and move the playhead across so it spreads the lubrication there. This is lubrication on that dried section and I'm going to be trying to put the ribbing cables back now. I feel like I did enough cleaning over a couple sessions and so here I'm trying to put one of the cables back in. I forget which one this is in particular, but um, the process is pretty straightforward. It's like in reverse of what you did according to the service manual directions. Putting back the screws. So now that the main board is gonna be screwed back to the actual mechanical portion that moves a mini disc playhead around. And this is interesting, this little tension uh, spool was rather hard to understand from the service manual how to put it back, but it seems like this is the right orientation. Is It needs to be kind of lined up there and then kind of tucked into that corner. As far as I can tell, that's how it was done. I'm here cleaning off the actual ribbon cable that's supposed to connect the LCD to the main board. And you can tell actually prior in the video that there was a little white tab on here. And that's important because that tab actually keeps that ribbon cable connected to the connectors below. So when I press this down, actually in the future, I will reassemble all this and it won't work because uh, that it needs to be pressed down. So what I ended up using is uh, four layers of Kapton tape cut into more or less the shape that the 
white little like tab there used to be. And the idea is like, hopefully this is enough layers. And since it's capped on tape, it's not non-conductive. So to put it on there, to, to make it so it becomes a sense of pressure so that the actual ribbon cable will make good contact with the main board again. Because prior to doing this, um, I assembled everything. And as soon as I go ahead and try and play it, um, the LCD panel won't activate because the connections aren't that good. Um, so here I am trying to just carefully put that in. And then as you can see, it's like a little too thick to be slotted in there, but I'm trying to like kind of wedge it and force its way in as you can, yeah, it's trying to move away because this isn't like a good adhesive there, but I think doing it this way, it was just enough to get that going. Here's the positive terminal that I'm trying to slot back in. Um, I'm hoping that by having everything mostly assembled that I can actually just then remove the solder here. So I'm gonna be applying some new solder here in order to get it kind of, you know, able to be picked up by this wick. So add some new solder, apply more heat, use this wick to try and pick up as much solder there as possible because you don't want to use hot air to try and remove it because there's a bunch of plastic components around and you don't want to melt those things. So here I am trying my best to pick up as much of the solder as possible. That looks like it's enough. And then to slot in the positive terminal here um, and make it so it's like in the position it should be. And then my hope is like by adding solder now, connecting to the main board that it is at the right angle it should be. And so I shouldn't have to worry anymore about whether or not um, it was a good idea to remove it. I think it was a perfect idea in order to get it cleaned as much as possible. Here I'm trying to make sure that the connection still works. So with a multimeter and connectivity mode, trying to make sure that it's beeping all along and that there's a solid connection from like the top over to where it touches the actual main board. And then to clean up the flux that was used, the flux I'm using is rather dirty for some reason, loves to leave these sort of brown burnt marks. Um, not all solder does this as far as I'm concerned. Now here we are trying to connect that ribbon cable that you needed to desolder originally. So using the adding new solder and using the solder wick to try and remove as much of it as possible because we're gonna have to need to resolder this back on. Now I couldn't get all the solder off, but I tried to get as much as I could off as possible. And then after a moment, I decided to, hey, well, I'll just reheat the solder here and at least make it like kind of like a clean, smooth surface using capped on tape here. And the point is I'm gonna try and solder the port, the section on the right. So I'm using this to kind of keep this ribbon because it loves to kind of bounce up. And I'm trying to keep it down because I'm trying to solder it from the side there. And if it keeps bouncing up, there won't be a good solder connection. As you can tell there, that's an issue. And so I'm going to try and add solder here. And you'll see again, it's like, yes, the solder is there, but it won't connect because it wants to bounce back up. And then I have to eventually use my left hand to keep it down. And then as soon as it cools, you can just let go. Taking off the capped on tape and then everything seems to be, you know, kind of not bouncing anymore. So I just had a solder and that connects that. And here you are, the mini disc has now been reassembled and with the battery terminal cleaned, it is working as expected. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and now start to assemble the rest of the case now that I've tested it as, um, much, as much in the open as possible. And here it is, the mini disc now cleaned from all sides and, um, now I can play mini discs again. And this is my first mini disc fix I've done um, in this well documented before. It sounds great. All the buttons work as expected and it's playing like, like how I remember it. Now I'm hoping to have more mini disc content in the future. Um, if y'all enjoyed what you saw, let me know. Uh, I would love to hear more of uh, your experiences with mini disc and the sort of songs you played from that time. And let me know if you wanna see more of this type of content because I would love to see if I can make this more of a regular thing. Thank you for taking your time and watching. Take care.